Above an ocean rages. Below, a silent river of steel and light flows on. Vehicles glide through a seamless tube of concrete and steel, a structure assembled with almost microscopic precision. Above them, millions of tons of seawater exert a relentless, crushing force. While this may sound like a vision from science fiction, it is the tangible reality of the underwater tunnel, a true triumph of modern engineering. The question is how such colossal structures are even possible. They are forged against immense water pressure, carved through unstable sediments, and built in environments utterly cut off from the surface. Humanity has somehow found a way to turn the impossible into the routine, creating breathtaking marvels hidden in the deep. They are monuments to human ambition, hidden beneath the waves. Here in the silent dark, entire landscapes are being redrawn. These colossal structures are the silent arteries of our modern world, uniting lands once separated by immense oceans, powerful rivers, and sprawling bays. They represent a fundamental shift in how we think about travel and trade, allowing journeys that once took hours to be completed in mere minutes. Without the need for ferries or soaring bridges, these subaquatic passages sustain the ceaseless flow of people and products, ensuring commerce moves with unmatched speed and safety. For coastal cities and entire nations, they have become the lifeblood of industry, fueling economic growth and unlocking new frontiers for regional development. But to build beneath the sea requires a mastery of both engineering and the environment, where every calculation is a safeguard against the immense pressures of the deep. The journey begins with exhaustive surveys of the seabed, a meticulous process of mapping the unseen world below. Engineers study the contours of the subsea terrain, retrieve core samples from the earth, and analyze the layers of rock to understand the region's geological architecture. From this data, they determine the stability of the seafloor itself and identify any hidden dangers that might compromise the entire endeavor. Alongside this technical work, a parallel mission unfolds to protect the delicate marine ecosystems. The project's design must account for its potential impact on the surrounding environment, ensuring the protection of native species and the minimal disturbance of natural habitats. To honor this commitment, teams often employ noise-dampening technologies during construction and may even install artificial reef structures, creating new thriving sanctuaries for marine life to flourish. It is a structure born on land yet destined for the deep. With the seabed mapped and charted, the monumental task of construction can finally commence. One of the most ingenious solutions for crossing these underwater chasms is the immersed tube method. The process begins not in the water, but with the prefabrication of colossal reinforced concrete segments on shore. Each standard element stretches approximately 217 meters in length and weighs over 73,000 tons. These sections are manufactured with microscopic precision, a vital step to guarantee a flawless alignment and a watertight seal once they are submerged. Inside each segment, chambers are carefully designed for their specific roles. Two main arteries are reserved for highway lanes, another for a railway line, and a service corridor is dedicated to future maintenance and inspection. When the sections are ready, they are floated out to sea and meticulously lowered into pre-dredged trenches on the seabed guided by floating pontoons and specialized cranes. Segment by segment, they are joined in sequence, forming a continuous tube of the required length. The most critical phase of this entire operation unfolds at the connection points. If the seals are not handled with absolute precision, the immense pressure of the ocean could force seawater inside, posing catastrophic risks. To prevent this, resilient rubber gaskets are fitted between the segments while layers of sand and gravel are carefully placed above and around the tunnel to counteract buoyancy and lock it in place. Only when the connections are securely locked and stabilized are the temporary end bulkheads removed. This final step transforms the individual tubes into a single, seamless, and watertight passage. This technique, however, is only viable in areas with a stable seabed and gentle currents. In environments with strong turbulence or complex underwater terrain, the challenges of anchoring and maintaining waterproof integrity render the immersed tube method impractical. A steel giant awakens beneath the earth, not with brute force, but with surgical precision. Where lowering pipes from above is impossible, engineers turn to the shield digging method, deploying a marvel of modern construction known as the tunnel boring machine.
This colossal system operates like a self-contained factory on the move, simultaneously excavating soil, clearing debris, and installing reinforced concrete linings in one continuous, closed-loop process. The technique allows for uninterrupted work beneath riverbeds or city streets, all while maintaining remarkable precision and minimizing disturbance to the world above. At its vanguard lies a massive cutter head, a spinning disc nearly 12 meters in diameter and weighing over 200 tons. It is armed with 140 high-strength steel cutting discs and blades, rotating at a steady 2.7 revolutions per minute. As it turns, the cutter head exerts a pressure of up to 400 bar, a force capable of crushing even the most compact rock and soil. The excavated material is immediately drawn into a chamber behind the spinning face, where foam and water are injected to balance the earth's pressure. This critical step prevents collapse, especially in soft or water-saturated ground. The resulting slurry is then carried away on a conveyor belt to the surface, passing through a discharge tower where lime is added to reduce its moisture before it is hauled away. Meanwhile, as the machine inches forward, its rear section automatically installs precast concrete segments, forming the tunnel's permanent lining. Once a full ring is assembled, a grout injection system fills the narrow gap between the new lining and the surrounding earth, securing the structure and ensuring it remains perfectly watertight. With the ring in place, hydraulic cylinders at the rear push the entire machine forward, beginning the next cycle of excavation and installation. Each complete cycle takes roughly 90 minutes, producing eight to 10 lining rings each day and advancing the tunnel by about 20 meters. Hundreds of engineers monitor pressure, temperature, and real-time camera feeds around the clock, maintaining the delicate stability of the operation. Thanks to its sealed and automated design, the machine can operate for months without interruption, a testament to the pinnacle of modern engineering. Yet this Titan has a single major limitation, its pace. When confronted with extremely hard rock or unpredictable pressure zones, the machine must be extracted, forcing engineers to switch to other methods to safely continue their journey forward. It is a science of controlled destruction, a symphony of fire and stone, in terrain where the earth is too hard for even the most powerful boring machines, engineers turn to a more primal yet remarkably precise technique. Where the continuous grind of a TBM is impossible, construction slows to a deliberate cyclical rhythm. This is the drill and blast method, a sequence of drilling, detonation, and reinforcement that demands unwavering precision and the strictest safety protocols. The process begins as the tunnel face is meticulously perforated with dozens of boreholes, each one drilled according to exacting technical blueprints. Cartridges of explosives are then carefully inserted deep into each hole. They are wired with electric detonators and linked by a web of detonating cords, all arranged in groups to orchestrate the firing sequence. Every detonator is timed to the millisecond, a strategy designed to maximize rock fragmentation while minimizing the violent vibrations that travel to the surface. Before ever entering the tunnel, each explosive charge is scanned, tested, and certified. As preparations near completion, massive ventilation fans fall silent and air ducts are depressurized, preventing the coming shockwave from tearing the system apart. Crews make their final checks, measuring circuit resistance and inspecting every connection. Only when every condition is verified does the countdown begin. With a final command, electrical signals race through the wires, triggering the detonators and shattering approximately 1.5 meters of solid rock. After the blast, a mandatory quiet descends for at least 20 minutes, allowing the dust to settle and inspectors to ensure the area is safe. On average, each detonation consumes between 80 and 100 kilograms of explosives, with anywhere from 9 to 18 such blasts occurring each day. While this method can be faster and more economical, its raw power comes at a cost. The intense vibrations can crack structures and cause water leakage, while the shock waves are devastating to marine life, making it entirely unsuitable for underwater projects. For this reason, the drill and blast technique is reserved almost exclusively for carving tunnels through mountains and solid dry ground. Beneath the waves, where even the most advanced machines falter, human ingenuity must find another way. When the geology proves too treacherous or the water pressure too immense, 
engineers are forced to embrace a more traditional, hands-on approach to carving a path through the deep. The journey begins with a vertical plunge, a main shaft driven from the surface down to the precise depth of the future tunnel. This shaft becomes the project's vital artery, a conduit for the constant flow of workers, machinery, and materials moving in, and the excavated earth moving out. Deep below, rock and soil are carefully drilled and broken apart. The debris is then loaded into sealed containers and lifted by crane back to the surface, clearing the way for the next slow advance. In areas where the ground is too weak for blasting, crews deploy powerful hydraulic cutting tools, meticulously slicing through the sediment. Though this technique is slower, it provides a crucial advantage, significantly reducing the danger of ground settlement and ensuring the stability of the tunnel. As soon as a new section is exposed, it is immediately reinforced with a layer of sprayed concrete, followed by a lattice of steel arches, mesh, and rock bolts, anchoring the structure against the immense pressures surrounding it. All the while, mechanical and maintenance teams work in relentless cycles, monitoring air pressure, dewatering systems, and the integrity of the equipment. The most critical task is maintaining a perfect equilibrium between the tunnel's interior and the crushing weight of the ocean above. Any imbalance could invite a catastrophic breach, allowing seawater to flood entire sections in an instant. The final piece is set, and a profound quiet descends. But this is not an end. It is the beginning of a silent, unending watch to ensure the structure's safety beneath the ocean floor. With construction complete, the critical phase of operational assessment and safety inspection begins, a process that will continue for the life of the tunnel. Within these modern marvels, a two-tiered design often separates the flow of traffic, creating a dual artery deep beneath the waves that doubles capacity without widening its footprint. Vehicles glide through at a steady 60 kilometers per hour with the reassuring presence of emergency exits placed every 200 meters along the route. Before the first vehicle ever enters, engineers subject the colossal structure to a battery of relentless trials. They test its waterproofing integrity, its resilience against immense pressure, and its defenses against fire. The heating and ventilation performance is scrutinized, and the overall stability of the entire form is pushed to its limits through a meticulous series of evaluations. The journey of an underwater tunnel never truly concludes with its opening, for its longevity is forged in constant maintenance. Dedicated technical teams conduct routine inspections, examining the concrete lining, waterproof membranes, and support frames for the slightest hint of deformation or cracking. A network of hundreds of sensors embedded along the tunnel's length acts as a nervous system, continuously monitoring pressure, temperature, and vibration. This stream of real-time data flows to a central control room where engineers can detect the earliest signs of structural fatigue. At the same time, specialized vehicles patrol the depths using high-pressure water jets and powerful suction systems to keep the passage clear of sediment. Through this fusion of advanced technology and precise human oversight, these tunnels can endure the harsh ocean environment for decades, a lasting testament to engineering resilience. In the crushing dark, where sunlight is only a memory, humanity has carved arteries of steel and light. These unseen pathways stretching for miles beneath the waves are more than marvels of modern engineering. Each one stands as a monument to human courage, a quiet testament to our unyielding drive to conquer the impossible. They are symbols of a relentless spirit forever pushing beyond the known horizon.